Welcome to the Mount Rushmore podcast. This is a podcast run by three very attractive leading men types who, by day, they host podcasts. And in the film, you think they're awesome because their job at hosting a podcast looks effortless and fun, challenging in exciting ways that are very rewarding and help them meet many interesting people and uh, achieve goals and things like that. But we happen to know that podcast recording is a very troublesome, problematic uh, enterprise wrought with pitfalls and strife. We've been trying to record this episode for 14 hours now. It's just, I keep, the computer crashes, uh, a plane flies over. Mari- I fall asleep. The mariachi band <laughs> kicks in. Today's episode, uh, in which I'm joined by my good friends Richard. Hello. And Michael. Howdy. Is uh, one in which we debate the Mount Rushmore of jobs in movies that look cool but probably suck in real life. Can we extend this to TV? Yeah, sure. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Is that, is that, is that cool? unfair or audible? I mean, it yeah, doesn't I li- really I li- matter. I literally don't care. Okay. okay. Perfect. <laughs> I had to, I had that's to that's think, the I, perfect reaction. I had to inhale deeply, uh-huh. absorb all of your and, uh, desperation, and then uh, it yeah. was like, I really, it's sure. Who, who cares? I would say it doesn't matter. that we are recording this. I'm sure, I'm sure you could also... Any TV reference I have, I could find a movie could, that yes, would work. Yes, We are recording this during near close to Labor Day 2019. So if your job is something that you imagine has cinematic qualities, but uh, pitfalls and sh- shortcomings... He's getting paid by Activision for every reference. <laughs> pitfall. And mention of pitfall. 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 <laughs> if you think uh, it's a super pitfall, yeah, then... Yeah. I guys, hope you've digged and dug this episode a lot. <laughs> Um, so, uh, guys, what'd you come up with? Do we understand the topic? Do you yeah, I feel pretty good about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think of every, like every role, every job that a leading uh, performer does. And I, I think of a lot of, uh, films that are led by uh, female protagonists, our main characters. Sure. They usually have something that looks like it's a lot of fun, but secretly their kind of life is falling apart or something like that. Right. It's like Hitchcock. They always had some profession like an architect or a composer or a photographer or something that... Seems cool. Seems cool. Has this nice kind of clean thing. The guy doesn't get his hands dirty. Or it's creative adjacent. You know, like an architect is, is create. Oh, my God. we got to stop talking about this. already kind of moved to the next topic. <laughs> um, so I think we know what this is. And uh, Michael, go. Cowboy. I don't know whether cowboy <laughs> is technically a job. I think for the majority of the 20th century, the idea that a job as cowboy exists. Oh, yeah. Now, whether it is like some sort of um, cow wrangler yeah. or you move cows. A livestock logistics yes. entrepreneur. Okay. <laughs> but the romanticism of 100 years of cowboy being on film yeah. um, has really pushed this idea, this myth of wow, it's great to be rugged and on the range and this person is so tough and independent and they can do this job because of their brash Americanness. <laughs> um, yeah. It seems fucking awful. Oh, it's awful, life. yeah. Like, to, to be out in the sweat and the dirt and to try to... Can you imagine trying to move... I don't know, a herd of cattle yeah. from one side of a state to another. Oh, that'd be the worst. How brutal is that? Yeah. Just living out there in the 1800s in the middle of nowhere Yeah, where I guess you could just get shot anytime because who cares, whatever, the laws. Yeah. Eh, maybe the, they'll come after you. Maybe they'll, they're just going to steal your cattle. Oh, yeah. Like, it just, like the concept and the, the romanticism of that job or that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I, I guess it's more of a lifestyle thing, but I think it's, I think it was a job. Like yeah. you were a cattle wrangler. Yeah. A cowboy is the cattle wrangler. Or you owned a ranch. Like that's, it's just, it's so desolate. And so you're, you're on your own and it seems terrible. Mm-hmm. No matter how much the movies have tried to wash over it and put good looking leading men in cowboy yeah. roles. And right. All square jawed and, you know, you very, very rarely get to shoot the bad guy as a real cowboy. Yeah. Doesn't happen that often. You're not riding a horse and chasing down uh, Native Americans and <laughs> all that stuff either. Right. You're just kind of out there getting killed or getting stomped by your cattle. <laughs> Gored Fucking by a... Fucking sucks. Yeah. 
Do you feel like that in opposition to, say, being a working on a loom in the industrialized city? Oh, that's one of my choices. Oh, no, just kidding. <laughs> oh, from the famous film The Loomist. Yes. Yeah, they, but that's never romanticized. <laughs> like uh, you, you never, you never see a version of like. <laughs> Charlie yeah. Chaplin working in a factory. And yeah, he, that seems great. You know what happens? He gets caught in the gears and goes round and round and still has to turn those mm-hmm. nuts and bolts. That's the craziest thing. <laughs> right. is that he, is in, he is in the machine getting mangled and he's still like... Well, you know, okay, when Disneyland opened in 1955, half probably because it was easy for Walt to do, but half that park was a tribute to the American Wild West and the role of the cowboy and then, then Native Americans. It was romanticizing. And all that's left is bear country. That's right. And all we got now is we right plopped in there is the Star Wars mm-hmm. land, right? So, but so I think maybe in comparison to what was happening in cities at the time, the idea of a cowboy was very romantic. It wasn't a person sitting working at a factory or punching numbers on a big adding machine or something like that. But agreed, it was bullshit. America as an idea is always great. Yeah, America like <laughs> IRL fucking always sucks. Yeah, always blows. Okay, uh, Manfredi. Yeah, my first choice is assistant district attorney. Oh, God. <laughs> because... I don't know how many of those posters I have up on my wall of, like, assistant district attorneys and yeah, the lifestyle. Yeah, your, fav- your favorite My favorite ADA. ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah the, the playing card, the bubblegum card yeah, sets. The that tops, you've got. Yeah, the tops. Tops, yeah. yeah. No, it always, in the movies and TV, so it, whether it's Law & Order, yeah. dum, dum, or some movie starring Rand, or Dennis Quaid, Yeah. Um, at no point does the ADA get to bed the hot star witness Mm -hmm. or go on some sort of investigative hunt hunt to find who the real bad guy is. Now, you know what you do probably? And I know some lawyers, and so I'm going to just extend this to district attorneys. Okay. A lot of paperwork. They don't show you the the, the mounds and Mm -hmm. reams of paperwork that you have to do to process, to, you know, file appeals... Any part of this. 90% of your job is, is paperwork. The other 10% is going after bozos who got, in a, got a DUI. Filing motions. Yeah, it's just it's yeah. bunk. ADA Jack McCoy was doing a lot of pencil pushing. He wasn't up there trying to bring down the people in, uh, in New York's, in New York's uh, courtrooms. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 all, it's all procedural. What I do like, I do appreciate, especially on Law & Order how much of the show shows kind of some fruitlessness or, of, or the politics of it. Yeah. Sure. Where Futility de- of it. The, yeah. Definitely like the ADA was under the thumb of like the DA. Yeah. Who was just like, you're not going to go after this one. That's, uh, and that's, just, just give it up. And it, that's why I have ADA on yeah. here specifically because that's, that's the person who's doing all the grunt work. Yeah. But that's usually the person who the movie is about. Mm-hmm. Never about the actual district attorney because that's the, that's the, the, the boss type who's there. You're getting too close to the case, <laughs> McGraw, or something like that. Uh, cr- the crime dog? Yeah, McGraw, the crime dog. <laughs> His cousin. <laughs> cousin of McGruff. <laughs> oh, that's what I was thinking of, McGriff. You're thinking of McGruff, yeah. McGruff. Not uh, McGriff. That's Fred McGriff. That's I'm thinking of Tim McGraw, country music singer <laughs> and cow- crime star. Cowboy. Cowboy dog. Uh, we were, my wife and I were working on a cruise ship, and after a show, we're doing entertainment after a show, a guy comes up. To us and goes, hey guys, that was a great show, and I should know because I uh, like to take a bite out of crime. <laughs> we look at them, what? What the <laughs> hell are you talking about? Oh, there's a break-in on Maple Street. The presidents are gone. It's they're pretending to be movers, but I think there's a crime happening here. <laughs> and we, he, we were just <laughs> standing there, like <laughs> jaw dropped, like. Are you implying that you created McGruff the crime dog? That's right, I did. Uh, well, you know, somebody else took all the credit for it, took, took away the rights to McGruff the crime dog <laughs> and said that they did it. Big crime took it away yeah, from big him. Big crime. So this guy in one second implied that he was in the entertainment industry like we were uh, because he was the creator of McGruff the crime dog. Oh, but boy. he never got credit for it because somebody else. St- st- How <laughs> often do you think he tries to work McGruff the cr- crime dog into yeah. a conversation <laughs> on a <laughs> daily basis? <laughs> So the ADA, that's a great, uh, that's a great choice, and I, I love the fact that there's been one assistant dic- district attorney out there listening to our podcast for three years, and finally he's like fist raised, going, <laughs> "You hear me? <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> you feel me? I feel seen." Okay, uh, Winfield. Uh, 
the bounty hunter. Oh like dog. shit! Uh, well, on TV in the movies, yeah. more like the coolest looking bounty hunter in the world, Boba Fett. True. Yeah. Who ultimately though meets his end in the belly of the sarlacc yeah. in the we Great think. Pit yeah. of Carcoon. We think. Yeah. We're not. We're never sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> that guy was the coolest. And if you look at other bounty hunters in the movie, whether it's like Deckard in uh, Blade Runner, Blade Runner, or Leonard Smalls in Raising Arizona, <laughs> <laughs> these guys are just these. They're out there on their own. They're cool. They're yeah. taking down the bounties. They're collecting the cash from it. They live bounty life law. On. There's the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood bounty law. Yeah. There are these guys. They're just out there, and man, are they so cool. Yeah. Uh, a bounty hunter is a really g- gross job. Yeah. It's, a, it's depressing. Like, even Dog the Bounty Hunter, which is as close as you will ever know to being a real bounty hunter yeah. in IRL, like, yeah. his life is just tracking down scumbags. No matter how much you dress up like a cast off from G.I. Joe, like mm-hmm. one of the dreadnoughts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you are out there, and all you're trying to do is you're putting your life on that line to take down. Or to bring in people for maybe some BS reasons. They yeah. couldn't pay their bills mm-hmm. or whatever they were going to do with the court system. Uh, meet whatever financial standards to come into. Like, all yeah. the things. Our court system in America is fucked as it is. But, like, the real life trying to track down people and who have couldn't pay their bail bondsmen is, like, awful. And I think that there's, there's like this cool, tough guy out there look that seems kind of appealing. Mm-hmm. Mm, I don't think it is. Yeah. I would yeah. say the De Niro character in Midnight Run, Midnight Run kind of strides that thing. He is De Niro, so he just looks badass the whole time. Yeah. But he's got this sh- <laughs> fast-talking sh- shyster of a white-collar criminal that he's dragging around and has to deal with this guy's lip. I think definitely my cowboy pick led into this because the man with no name or Rooster Cogburn from True Grit. Um, all these okay. these loner characters that are out there that are kind of like as these idealized people on their own, living by their own rules. I mean, listen, Quint is a from Jaws was a bounty hunter of sorts. Yeah. Man. I w- so all fishermen are, are bounty <laughs> Yeah, that's a bit of a... <laughs> no, not all fishermen. <laughs> Just but, Quint. But Quint yeah. is definitely... He's like, not catching any fish. He's catching a fish. He's yeah. catching yeah. fish that are on the run from the law. Yeah. He definitely ex- exudes... <laughs> Homicidal fish. ...a certain type of, like, coolness... Yeah. ...and lonerism. But I think, out, I think in real life it's just... Yeah. Do you think if it was changed to Booty Hunter, it would be different? <laughs> Do you think? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, Richard Manfred. I'm sorry. Yes, and I should. Yes, say. and. Sorry, yes, Thank and. Thank you. Uh, my second choice is crime lab investigator. Mm, okay. Because anytime you see a, a crime lab in a movie, and certainly CSI yeah. now that we're talking about TV shows would fall into this, they are working in the most high tech, badass work environment you could ever imagine. Yeah. They've got cameras that can somehow take an image and blow up, blow it up five thousand times, yeah, and not get pixelated, and actually make it less pixelated than it was before because they enhance. Yeah, because when you hit enhance, enhance the it. button does that for you. Yeah. They take the eight bit Super Mario, yeah, and keep advancing until it's up to like the Nintendo Wii version, and they're mm-hmm. just like, we just got there. <laughs> yeah, that's all you got to do. Just that's hit. all you need to know. Yeah, and they've got like the the, the you know all the. Computer screens, so you just wave your hand over it. Ooh, and you like do the minority next thing, report. Like the minority report, yeah. mm-hmm. exactly. And, you know, I think the reality of this job is you're not actually catching the bad guys. You're not, you know, you're not actually going and interviewing the suspects. You're stuck in a lab knee deep in dead bodies. Yeah. Pu- That's base pu- puke. Pubes. Puke. puke vomit. Yeah. It, Semen, jizz, yeah, bags of jizz. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what your life is, and mm-hmm. it just seems like maybe it's. A, I, I'm sure it's interesting from the standpoint of what you can do with the technology. Yeah, but hey, I've, every time I've ever seen a documentary or anything on a real crime lab, it looks like they're just working in some cube farm somewhere. Yeah, and B, 
at, you, at some point, you just got to get sick of the semen. Mm-hmm. You're all right? you're processing lab the, dips based on blood different and, thread, just in like a different solution here and here. You're, yeah, Dipping you're just this thread in this solution. This one. Yeah, it, this it's one. it's a very seems very rote. Yeah, like it would get boring. And after, after all, all, you probably think fast. all these taste the same. Excuse me. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> oh my god, I wasn't supposed to taste it. Uh, oh god, I'm doing my job wrong. Uh, yeah. I I would venture to say that the depictions of these characters are often there's often a quirky girl with Betty Page Banks who yes is in the lab too right and I'm sure but there's also the maybe the representative kind of nerdy there's a dorky yeah, yeah. dorky white guy always white yeah for black always uh, never certainly never Latino never seen that hmm. um, and he's always probably ten times more attractive than than any normal person is. Yeah. But because they've like have him untuck his shirt, yeah. he's suddenly the dork. He's the dork, yeah. 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 Uh, do you think that uh, that perfect guy? I, my sister dated a guy who was a fingerprint forensic guy. And he, he, he Did said, he leave his <laughs> fingerprints all over <laughs> her? He said they never, ever caught anybody based on fingerprints. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Do you have a big database that you can just kind of search immediately? He goes, It's not immediate, it takes like weeks. Oh, then you, but you, then you catch the guy? No, never. You can't push the button and it just yeah. sort of goes... Blah, 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 blah. Like every fingerprint is always messed up. There's always incomplete. They don't have enough whorls or swirls or zips or zaps. Yeah, that's it. I, I think a big part of it is that the technology, that, the, tech, the fictional technology far outstrips what the real life technology is. Yeah. And that's got to be frustrating. Like yes. your first day on the job that you don't have a button you can just push. And here comes every person who matches this, you know, hair yeah. strand. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't work that way. Rose, uh, do you guys care if we take a little bit of break and let the audience know all these opportunities that they have? That's just a click away. <laughs> I love it. We're sponsored by LinkedIn. Or yeah. <laughs> who is it now? <laughs> we're brought to you by. What, what should we be brought to? You? I yeah. Okay. So um, Craigslist. Craigslist. <laughs> when you're desperate. Yeah. <laughs> for a job. Go. Uh, yeah, Craigslist. When you when you think you're gonna find the best job for your jobs. Um, offer gigs offered gigs wanted um, gig okay here's an here's a gig we're going to offer uh, low 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 to no pay and that is a reviewer of the past episodes of the Mount Rushmore podcast we recorded them we don't remember whether they're any good or not so could you go back and do us a favor and go back and listen and then rate them on a scale of one to five on iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify. Yeah. Or YouTube. Uh, Just keep saying things. iHeartMedia. iHeartMedia. Etsy. And go ahead and leave a rating, a 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 or whatever, and we would appreciate that. Uh, compensation can be discussed later on at a later date. Uh, consider this an internship, and you're doing this for exposure. Yeah, your, consider, consider the, your reward is the joy in knowing... What you brought to us. What you brought to us. By doing it, yeah. Well, you'd be like a reviewer, like the all, all Music or something like that, or the people who review things, um, I don't know, and review things. And then you could also, uh, while you're doing that, go ahead and join us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and uh, let us know suggestions you may have for future episodes. We'd love to hear from you and know what you're interested in hearing us talk about, or tell us what to avoid. Nobody's done that yet. But that could be wise to just say there could be vast areas of interest that we should just be warned to stay away from. And perhaps our listening audience could help us do that. Okay, we are back. And it is Michael's opportunity to tell us his third choice. Mine kind of piggybacks. Okay, wait, so we got Cowboy, Bounty Hunter, Butcher Baker, Candlestick Maker. What else? Cowboy Indy. Is this like ten, like like an Agatha Christie novel? I All think the it characters? is. Yeah. This is uh, Tinker Taylor, Soldier Spy. Ryan Johnson's next movie, Knives Out, which just features all of these. Uh, no, they're all in it. Uh, scientists, all disciplines. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Listen, whether you are inventing dinosaurs and invariably getting chased by them, discovering cures for diseases, discovering Godzillas, <laughs> <laughs> figuring out how to blow up an asteroid, or doing that thing where Samuel L. Jackson is under the water and then he gets bitten in half by a shark. Oh, that's the best. Mm-hmm. You know he campaigned so, to do that? <laughs> there, in, in, there was a visual effects review of 
Deep Blue Sea. Deep Blue Sea. Sea, Which features uh, the most incredible song by uh, LL Cool J called Hand is Like a Shark's Fin. That's the end oh, song. Oh, that's the end thing. And it's the one that sums up the movie, right? What my favorite type of rap song, which is the one that sums up what you just watched for 90 <laughs> minutes in wow. a four and a half minute song over credits where he sings, my hand is like a shark's fin. <laughs> my hand is like a shark's <laughs> fin. Yes, go on with your uh, Samuel With Jackson, your dumb thing. No, he, no he, I had my dumb thing too. So. He, he told the director, I don't want to say all these words. I don't want to deliver this whole monologue. You should have the shark eat me sooner in this monologue. <laughs> and so he had like a monologue that was three times longer. And uh, he just kept sh- cutting it short. And the director would go, no, no, no. You gotta, I think it was Randy Harlan or something was the director. No, you got to say the whole monologue. <laughs> no, I don't want to say this whole monologue. How the shark eat me now? Like right at the beginning. That is, that is incredible. And so he just kind of phoned in the monologue. That, um, that is a great actor's choice. Yeah. That's built on either... Uh, uninterested in the script, but also just built, that's the best moment of the thing is like he gets eaten mid, you know, soliloquy. Right? Yes. I would almost say that's the beginning of Sharknado, the comic, you know, the, the self-aware monster movie that knows that it's, it's a genre film and stuff like that. But that, and then he, afterwards, I think he went, they were editing, he went by the editing room and said, Kill me sooner. <laughs> he, he told the, edit, the editor to cut him out to kill me sooner. Sorry. Okay, so all scientists. What about horticulture? Or what about uh, people who, uh, science of fragrance, uh, measuring the uh, very attractive women and the pheromones that they people who, put off? People who investigate fantastic beasts and where yeah. to find them. Yeah. None of those things in real life. All, you know what? The, the real life bad. of the scientists is you're applying for grants. Oh. All the time. Really? All you're doing is just doing paperwork to get more money to continue your, your work for another 10 years. Oh, you're wow. trying to get some sort of tenure. You're trying to figure out how to stay in your job to do possibly a noble thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But ultimately, your cure for this terrible disease that is ravaging the world, that is creating World War Z, yeah. uh, is not going to happen in 90 minutes on TV. It's not going to happen with the sort of push of the button. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, effects that a movie requires because you can't have a movie that takes place over yeah. 13 hard years of just trial and error and trying to figure out the one thing that we haven't done and yeah. doing millions of tests. It's all like, well, if we put the bomb at the right asteroid mm-hmm. you, at this p- spot and you send the truckers up to space. Well, in the documentary, The Nutty Professor, <laughs> he discovers Flubber pretty fast. He's right there with yeah. Flubber. Yeah. But, it, you know, the real-life science work doesn't just... You don't just discover King Gordira and Rodan. Mm-hmm. You're there. <laughs> <sighs> but writing a thesis paper, and you have to get it re- uh, submitted to, like, Scientific America, <laughs> and you have to have it peer-reviewed. That's yeah. what they don't see. You don't see the peer-review aspect. The only movie that has gotten close was in... Uh, uh, what's the... <laughs> what's the one, the one with... Uh, gosh... Uh, Harrison Ford, where he's the doctor. M- Mosquito Coast? Not Mosquito Coast, but that maybe that there's an aspect of that, too. The one where he jumps from the train. Dr. Indiana Jones? Dr. Indiana Jones. <laughs> no, the, uh, this is awful. The Fugitive. The f- thank oh. you. Why did you say Dr. The Richard first? Kimball, okay. Dr. Richard Kimball. The, Dr. Richard Kimball. The last, I wouldn't have thought, because you already thought, the one where there's a one-armed man who kills people. I know. I, I described it terribly. The last three-fifths of that movie is him, like, going to the hospital to make sure this thing was popular. It was properly, like... Peer, like he discovers that this thing wasn't like peer reviewed. He discovers the signatures mismatched to get you know, Provasic or whatever it's called. I I couldn't remember the name of the fugitive, but I could remember the name of the drug. <laughs> Good job. But um, congrats. Yeah, like half of that movie is just like him doing the diligent work of a scientist or a doctor, like yeah, just doing the paperwork legwork to figure out. Oh, this mm-hmm. wasn't. A, these didn't get the right yeah. approvals. Yeah, the dates don't match up. And, like, I think that is the most realistic aspect mm-hmm. of that movie. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because he does do the detective work that yep. he needs to do to clear his name. But those poor scientists. I mean, so far, everybody. It's just the drudgery of, of life's jobs. There's a through yeah. line through, yeah. I think, both of ours, which is work sucks. Yeah. Work, work blows. Uh, Richard. All right, my third choice, astronaut. You know what? Huh. I will debate you on that. Okay. I think an astronaut in real life is better than that in the movie because in the movie, 
it's not cool because you are constantly stuck on some other planet. <laughs> you are your ship's getting blown up. You're constantly in peril. The way that astronauts they feature a certain sense. I have astronaut written down as like the opposite on here. Really, the way that you think that in movies there is some extra danger, and not that astronauts aren't in danger constantly from you know a tiny speck of rock rocketing through your. One tile coming loose on yeah, your spaceship. like that is a constant danger, but that isn't the exciting danger. But that's at least exciting, because I think the actual role of an astronaut is like 95% um, person who does a lab experiment yeah. for, for a scientist. Isn't even the scientist, but has been given these instructions for how you need to feed these cockroaches oh. to see how they react. You to happen to be on the ISS, but you're doing something that a third grade you're class doing, came a mon- with. You're doing monkey <laughs> work, yeah. You're just, you yeah. know, you could be a trained monkey to do most of this, but there mm-hmm. you are, you're stuck in it. And yeah, being able to look down and say, hey, that's Earth. Isn't that cool? That would kind of get old after a couple days. Okay. Right? Same know. thing with weightlessness. Like, it seemed like that after a few days, you'd just be more annoyed with all the yeah. problems it causes than, hey, cool, my food floats. Mm-hmm. What is the cool astronaut in movies. Oh, well, like you said, like whenever somebody gets flown onto a asteroid to to, to to destroy it, that's cool. Yeah, that is cool. Do you think the astronaut is depicted in non-fantasy sci-fi scenarios enough to kind of get a sense of it? Because I, I think of Apollo 13 or... I'm trying to think of other a- regular astronaut. Regular astronaut movies? Films. First Man? First Man? Yeah. Right stuff? Not, yeah. Not um, Space Cowboys or not... But Earth to the Moon? Yeah. yeah. The uh, Tom Hanks miniseries. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there have been some. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I can imagine because they are chosen because of their multidisciplinary uh, um, skills. Right. So they have the... Fortitude, physical fortitude to make the journey, but they have the intelligence to do all the science crap. Right. Yeah. And I just, I just think that it would be, especially if you're one of the saps who's on the International Space Station, I think you would just get bored out of your skull yeah. after a while. Mount Rushmore podcast is available on the ISS. ISS. <laughs> it is. <laughs> on their ISS feed, yeah. They're, they also have to learn, on ISS, they have to learn... Um, Russian. Russian. So, like, so can, whenever you go into the Soyuz capsule, you got to speak their Russian. <laughs> you We're all know. drunk on vodka. <laughs> Boris is passed out. It's it's fine. Okay. Um, is it then? My where la- are we at? My last one. Your last one. Okay. The President of the United States of America. Whoa. Hmm. On film is much more adventurous and interesting and cool, and you're punching guys out of planes. I might argue this one with you. Because I would say, here's my counterpoint real uh-huh. quick, that in, I, I would say 50% of all movies, the president's actually the bad guy. Uh, yeah, sometimes you are having sex with a hooker and then uh, you have like some sort of stroke and a replacement you is brought in a la the movie Dave. Right. Still pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but um, no, I think that, that that point is the real president of the United States has a job that you know, outside of the current one, is a lot tougher than... It, it is not what is depicted. It is a lot of negotiating. It is a lot of compromising. It is a lot of trying to, God, s- just stay at 51%. And that is must be so mind-numbing. Yeah. It must be so difficult. It is so aging on a person. And you can't tell with, like, Trump because he is just a facade on top of... Whatever, whatever he is, he is just, you know, cakes of makeup like Queen Elizabeth. But on the flip side, he's trying to make it more interesting by ordering things like dropping nuclear bombs into hurricanes. That, I mean, is that not a plot from like some sci-fi movie? I mean, that's so how you get you nu- nuclear f- barracudas. You mentioned Sharknado earlier. It is exactly that. Like, yeah. We happen to live in a very um, exaggerated timeline of a person that is a literal movie president he is the psycho president right but i think that uh up until then most presidents have led a very um restrained uh virtuous life even the ones that were kind of dickholes because they 
all their decisions are vetted by multiple staffs. Yeah. And, Teddy it, Roosevelt yeah. once led the cavalry into a tornado. Yeah. Was the tornado a nuclear Shirtless. tornado? Mm, Could no. have been. You know, yeah. We don't know. Don't know. Do you think a uh, guy like Jimmy Carter, when he saw um, Air Force One, Air Force One, or was he like, man, that would have been cool? That was Clinton. <laughs> Or do you think you when yeah, he, yeah, add more a peanut to that? Uh, add more peanut. Uh, add more peanut. <laughs> do you think he wished he could have announced an extinction level event like uh, Morgan Freeman? Like that would have been so awesome. Yeah, I <laughs> wish I could. have. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've impersonated a president. On this podcast. We haven't had any come. We haven't yeah. had presidents any come, have come by lately. I told myself I was going to learn some good president impersonations. I ha- I hadn't done it yet. You were you, I when I first I came over here a little. Earlier, Richard. Yeah, he's working on his Van Buren. I was looking. I had a Good. wig, big <laughs> powdered wig. He he's was, been. That's why he's been putting on the weight for Taft. <laughs> he, was, he was doing a little Hoover like this. <laughs> a nerd. He did his nerd voice. <laughs> I'm Here, trying, here's my Calvin Coolidge impression, everyone. Okay. Stay cool. There we go. That's good. That's Silent good. Cal. Silent Cal. <laughs> Silent Cal. I've been to, trying to bulk up for LBJ, hitting those weights. <laughs> okay. All right. Is that it? I've got one you more. you got one more. Okay. Firefighter. Oh, all right. Because you see something like Backdraft, and they're doing cool shit. They're running into burning buildings. They're yeah. saving babies. And they're rescuing dogs. Yeah, real firefighters don't do that sort of stuff. Not on the regs. Mm-hmm. Not regularly. Most of the time, if they're putting out a fire, it's some sort of like warehouse fire where they're just kind of standing outside. Yeah. A meth addict is just on fire. Just you know, my humblest apologies to all the firefighters that listen to all those brave first responder firefighters that listen to this yeah. podcast that are sliding down the poles listening to this podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know that the klaxons go off and the bells yeah. ring, and immediately the Mount Rushmore podcast plays. And so, as you hear this, you're sliding down that 34 minute pole because it's a long <laughs> pole. Have you gotten <laughs> to this true. point? I'm and, really and like, like a split pole. Like, what is it? You're going down. You're like. Oh man! Oh nuts! I don't do anything. I thought these guys were on our side. <laughs> well, you know, if, if you know nothing about me, I'm anti first responder. <laughs> That's right. Totally. So, no, I just I I think that the job is much more in, in real life a lot more mundane and boring than I think you spend again. Yeah. This may be a through line through mine. I'll go ahead and judge oh. myself here a little bit. A lot of cooking chili and foosball. A lot of co- lot a lot of making 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 grub for the the rest of the boys and girls. Mm-hmm. And shining up that truck, keeping that truck real shiny. Mm-hmm. Think about when you were a kid. Like that was it was be so cool to be on a fire truck. Yeah, yeah. After you get in real life, you get on that fire truck a few times. You don't get to go through there whenever you want. Look at this mm-hmm. guy that's been on a fire truck. <laughs> yeah, Mister Big Shot over here. I bet you they have to have a lot of HR training because because there's a new firefighter. And They're here not and fireman and she he has a certain set of pronouns that we all got to get used to. So let's respect Devandra. Is that is that what we call you, Devandra? <laughs> Do you think they have a lot of HR training and like uh, things like? I would like sus- I would suspect that it is probably not the type of job where being politically correct comes naturally to yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, I think that's probably accurate. Yeah. Okay. All right, so each of these guys, they chose five, and I get to oh. pick out a winner. We did, right? We did? Right, we only did three. No, we did five. Three. Michael, how many did we do? I don't know. The seven. We did seven. The seven deadly sins of yeah. jobs. Uh, here's what I want to go with. So thank you guys for your great suggestions. I, what, I do want to say I really like the whimsical uh, way that I think Michael used actual Fisher-Price little people <laughs> to make his choices. <laughs> So, you know, good good for you because those are the those are the actually probably the professions that we spend the most time. Yeah, I had the little people bounty hunter, the little people bounty hunter, <laughs> who didn't have that. He's got the little gun um, <laughs> and a little little tiny like a warrant on his other hand. So, Winfield, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with cowboy bounty hunter and president from from Team Winfield's uh, little people set. And uh, uh, Man Freddy, I'm mm-hmm. gonna go with crime lab. Investigator, because laboratories who commit crimes are, it's important that they be investigated. <laughs> the canine Maybe I menace. Didn't <laughs> the canine menace. I love it needs to be stopped. Check I love forging. that that's been in the hopper for 25 minutes. He's really no, been no, it just stewing on it. Just came to me. <laughs> no, the hopper, in the hopper was the cowboy, like, you're, fight, you're lassoing 
roping doggies, and then you got Jake Gyllenhaal just chasing after you the whole time, just like. <laughs> and? and what's the problem? <laughs> this has been the Mount Rushmore of Salazar. I, as always, am Jeff. I'm Richard. I'm Michael.